Jesus name. Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for your love and your mercy, God. Lord, we ask that you give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to understand. Help each one of us to be a light, Lord God. And when we're being a light, that we're able to stay single-minded and have our mind on you in the midst of all things that would want to hinder our life and our walk and to be able to be still in the midst of that and know that you are God and that you have an ultimate plan um, that Satan would not steal from us your word or the direction that you would have for us in this faith walk. In Jesus' name, I pray and agree with all of you. Thank you, Jesus. I have a Savior, a friend forever, lover of my soul. Through every trial, he won't forsake me. I'll never be alone. All I ever need is Jesus. All I want to sing is his name. Oh, my heart belongs to Jesus. By his grace and mercy, I'm saved. There are no riches that could persuade me or steal away my soul. I have been ransomed now and forever, my Savior, my reward. All I ever need is Jesus. All I want to sing is his name. All my heart belongs to Jesus, by his grace and mercy I'm saved. You're my future, you're my hope. You're the anchor for my soul. And I was made for you. You're my future, you're my home. You're the anchor for my soul. And I was made for you. All I ever need is Jesus. All I want to sing is his name. All my heart belongs to Jesus. By his grace and mercy I'm saved. All my heart belongs to Jesus. By his grace and mercy I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. One of those verses says, not all the riches could persuade me to look away from Jesus. And in this society that we live in this world and a lot of people that have their intention toward God and often the very thing that would turn them away would be some form of money or riches. What will be our stand when we're faced with the choice? The Bible says that the Antichrist will come and that they will want for people that are Christians to deny the name of Jesus. I can imagine that's already going on in many countries in reference to 
uh, countries that hate Christians and that have their tribes or um, different areas of their townships and their neighborhoods that are trying to live for Christ and learn the word. And they're pulling these people out of their vehicles, making them slaves, tearing their Bibles up. Are they asking them to deny Jesus? What if someone said, deny him and I will give you whatever sum of money you can make it up in your mind? Where's the line? That is what is in our heart. That we have that just foundation, no crossing the line that's personal every one of us every one of us in our own time in our prayer time that we search our hearts we find out what is the thing that would move us away from relationship with God or is there nothing that would and striving for that nothing that you love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I think that covers it. I think that covers every base. Loneliness, all the things. When you love the Lord with everything, there's not an exception. No matter what it is, there's no exception. And again that we just seek deep into our hearts and we search that we search out the very corners of our heart and that we surrender all like that song that I've seen saying a couple of times in my heart, there are kingdoms of a world that's all my own kingdoms that are only seen by myself and God alone. In the past, when I tried to fool myself, you can't, you can't fool yourself. Jesus, I surrender all. Come on to the path, the faith walk. Surrender all. No line can make you decide to cross away from that relationship. Each one of us, me, every day, my husband will tell you. All of you, you have your own lives. That is a place for us to search in our heart. When God has whole access and full dominion and we set up his throne in our heart and his word then he has liberty to give us direction and freedom and, and knowledge and everything we need and I believe that with all of my heart and I trust the Lord for his help I trust him for that help today we are going to read in Romans chapter 12 I appeal to you, therefore, brother, by the brother, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. So when we talk about our body, we're talking about every part, our heart, our mind. Our, every part of our physical being, our pain, our desire, our hunger, all of ourselves presented to God as a living sacrifice where he can set up his kingdom in our hearts and his spirit is welcome. There's not another spirit that's in the way because we're letting it be but there is the spirit of god that gives us all that we need and that is our spiritual worship 
don't be conformed to the world. That's what we see every day. I was just having a talk with Liliana earlier about the teenagers and everybody. I think I'm just going to throw a number out there, but it's probably 90% that are willing to be intimate before marriage in reference to getting too close, you know, and that is so easy to conform to in this world because this world just, it's like nothing. That's like nothing. He wants us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we have a key to that door that he has clearly given us to be able to walk through and be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Whatever other areas that we conform to the world, each one of us know our own hearts and God knows our hearts and we can have him help us and we have the choice to continue or to be transformed. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. When you have that renewed mind, it you have that ability. You immediately know, no, this isn't, this is not what I need in my life. For by the grace God given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God is assigned, that we search out our own heart, that we, we know our inner selves and we submit that. For as in one body, we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. So each one of us have gifts gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. If it's prophecy in proportion to our faith, if it's service in our serving, the one who teaches in teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness, so we can look at this list and we can see the gifts that we individually have. We can maybe see some gifts that aren't listed on here. So realize that God's given us those gifts and the way we use them can bring these things to our life that are on the side of what God is wanting us to do with those gifts. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. We... We want to worship God with zeal. We want to shine brightly for others. And we want to give of ourselves in the lives of people that we come in contact with. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. We all want to stick up for ourselves and have and avenge ourselves, as it says. It says never avenge yourselves, but leave it to God. And when something happens that just gets us, you know, riled up, that's hard, right? Um, especially that um, righteous indignation. <laughs> I 
God is able to step in if we trust him. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, cherry, it, excuse me, to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. And for by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And I had a very good friend tell me that that is how she makes her way through her possible enemies in life by pouring out the honey, <laughs> because that will make them not even know how to respond. <laughs> It silences the enemy. <laughs> That's for sure. It silences the enemy. But I just pray that God pour out his word on us today. Give each of us a direction for our lives and that we would receive his word today and that we would walk in his way and be full of his mercy toward all people, even those that may be our enemy. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for your help and your mercy. And we love you, Jesus.